the Build Smart, Lead Strong podcast on the Michigan Business Network. I am Jennifer DeMond and I am the Executive Director of the Manufacturing Growth Alliance, also known as MGA. Here with us today is Colleen Killen Roberts. She is the Vice President of Entrepreneurship at the Edward Lowe Foundation. Welcome to the show, Colleen. Thank you so much, Jen. So we're gonna dive right in and and start asking a few questions. I really want our audience to get to know the foundation, who you are, who you serve, and talk about some industry trends. Are you ready? I am ready. Awesome. Well, will you share with us a little bit about the Edward Lowe Foundation and maybe a little bit about your background? You bet, you bet. Well, I'll start with the organization. Um, The organization, the Edward Lowe Foundation was founded by Mr. Lowe, who invented kitty litter in 1947. He was a serial entrepreneur, um, but mostly he believed in um, the uh, American entrepreneur being the backbone of the American economy. Uh, He himself worked tirelessly uh, to build his own business. Um, In fact, he actually traveled 50,000 miles a year for the first 10 years before he made his first million dollars in sales. Did you know that? I didn't know that. That's a true entrepreneur, man. He's Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) and he had a really clunky car at the time. And can you imagine traveling the roads back, you know, then in the 40s? Uh, Just incredible. He was very driven. Um, At that time that his business started to grow and get into the second stage, which we consider uh, 10 to 99 employees and one to 50 million in sales, he felt really alone and unsupported. And um, he felt there was a lot of help for big business and a lot of support for startups, but not so much for the second stage uh, area. So when it became time for him to think about legacy, uh, he decided that he was gonna leave his legacy to the American entrepreneur and pass on his fortune to them. And that's how the foundation became what it is. Fantastic. And, and how, did, how did you become part of the Edward Lowe Foundation team? What's your background? Yeah, so um, I worked for 23 years in second stage. At that time, I didn't know it was called second stage, but mm-hmm. in different positions, ranging from accounting to operations all the way to chief of staff before working at the Edward Lowe Foundation. And I learned that that size organization is definitely my sweet spot and Mm -hmm. fell in love with that, um, the closeness of the the group, the the fast pace, the the role that it plays in the economy as well. Mm Um, So when it came time for me to start to think about a job change at um, uh, one point in time about six years ago, I wanted to move from what I call the fire in my belly to having some more meaning in my life. And I thought about foundation work. I thought about not-for-profits. And I found the Edward Lowe Foundation from some networking that I was doing actually through the MEDC. Um, Susan Holbin, who was at the MEDC at the time, she said, have you heard of this program that the foundation runs? And I hadn't. And she said, well, I think you need to talk to someone there. Mm -hmm. So I did. And once I found out what the foundation did, I thought this is a perfect opportunity to serve not only one business at a time, but many. Mm -hmm. And today we serve approximately 950 entrepreneurs across the nation every year. Oh, that is such fantastic, such meaningful work. I can see uh, that you enjoy it immensely. (laughs) Thank you, I do. And you know well, because you're a great partner of ours. Oh, well, thank you. So industry trends, Uh, many of our small manufacturers, second stage manufacturers are always interested in trends from experts in the field like the Edward Lowe Foundation and yourself. Could you share with us one or two industry trends that you've been seeing uh, recently? Well, I wouldn't really consider myself an expert, uh, but I do um, have some um, experience observing um, business. Um, And this year, boy, it's been a crazy one, hasn't it? Yes, yeah. (laughs) Most of, yeah, I know. Most of us um, who are alive today haven't seen anything like this. So um, small business, of course, negatively impacted in many, many ways. Um, And just after the pandemic started, we assembled and delivered CEO roundtables in Florida, Louisiana, and Michigan 
So I was fortunate enough to be able to be an observer on each of these meetings, which ended up being about 60 hours of time on Zoom over four months. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we, we, we learned um, about some concerns, some, as you would say, trends, maybe most of what we heard, um, concerns over cash flow, applying and managing the PPP loan, issues on how to manage your team and keeping them engaged remotely. That was a really big one. Mm -hmm. The remote issue. Yeah. Um, we found on the remote issue that most businesses found a certain level of efficiency from the new work situation. And in fact, a lot of businesses that we've talked to plan to divest their offices over time and allow their oh, wow. team yeah, to work yeah. indefinitely at home. So that was a really interesting trend. And in fact, I think even at the foundation, our leadership has um, become more open to that possibility as well. Well, here's a more futuristic um, question for you, Colleen. What does future support for these growth focused companies look like in Michigan? Because I know, as you mentioned, you know, you're a na go national uh, with your services, but specifically for Michigan, what does future support look like? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. Um, and to answer that, I have to share with you how we work at the foundation. We are an operating foundation and not a grant giving foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, so we offer programs um, as uh, support to second stage businesses. Our business model is that we work through our partners. Our partner here in Michigan is the MEDC. We've been working with them for over 12 years and we deliver programs with them to help these businesses grow. One of the ideas we talked about with them was to develop a roadmap, if you will, of services to offer the companies. So an example might be the company would start with a leadership retreat here at the foundation on campus, Mr. Lowe's former home, 2000 acres in Southwest Michigan. At the retreat, they might meet some other Michigan companies in which then they would connect with and we would put them on a round table. Um, from there, we um, would uh, encourage them to go through our system for integrated growth, which is a team of talented experts in areas from operations to HR to supply chain, as well as several other areas. And once they've gone through all that programming, they may feel like they want to give back to um, other entrepreneurs as Mr. Lowe did. And at that point, we'll invite them to be part of our newest program, the American Academy of Entrepreneurs, in mm -hmm. which they could become a mentor. So it's a bit of a pay it forward model. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll close out here in just a, just a few more, in a few more questions, but since you have all those services that are available to these second stage companies, how, how would a second stage company in a manufacturer access those services, Colleen? So they would connect with our partner. Um, we, we like to have our partners lead the efforts. Um, we ask our partners for um, the recruiting mechanism piece and then we supply the programming. So Rodney Parkman at uh, the MEDC would be the contact there. They would connect with him and then he would um, determine where they are in their process and what they might need on that roadmap of services. And of course, any uh, manufacturer can also reach out to me at the MGA as well. Um, I, can, I always know that that pathway is certainly to Colleen and to Rodney as well. So access to services, um, such a valuable uh, resource for our growth companies in Michigan. Specifically, um, will you talk a little bit about um, opportunities you see for Michigan um, manufacturers in Michigan? Sure. Yeah, as we talked about in the pandemic, it's definitely changed the world we live in. You know, um, my background is in accounting operations, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. and I believe those with a strong balance sheet, a willingness to innovate and adjust to the changes are going to be the ones that are going to come out on top. In our experience here at the foundation, those that have pushed against, uh, I guess, what this new norm is or grasped onto the old ways of doing things are the ones that we see that are going to struggle. Um, so that's, that's what we're seeing from our perspective. Okay. Well, I just have one more question before we close out and thank you uh, for your time. Is there anything that uh, I, I didn't ask that you hope to share with our audience today? Well, I think I'm just um, thankful for the opportunity. I would also like to thank all of the, the Michigan manufacturers for doing what they do for our fine state. 
Um, I come from a family of manufacturers and I have a huge amount of respect, not only from my family heritage, but also from our founder, Mr. Lowe. Um, he was a manufacturer. He, he said he was in manufacturing because he ended up being in the clay business. Um, mm -hmm. So um, we just appreciate you. And part of the reason that I'm affiliated with MGA is because of that love of manufacturing. So thank you for doing what you do. And thank you, Jennifer, for being such an advocate of uh, Michigan manufacturers. It's a joy to be in this industry. It's a joy to support these second stage manufacturers. Well, thank you again, Colleen, for joining us today. You've been listening to the Build Smart, Lead Strong podcast on the Michigan Business Network. Again, I'm John DeMud, 